So what waterway holds the greatest significance for the United States? The Colorado River is an obvious choice, as are the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Seaway. An argument can be made for the Panama Canal, but there is one waterway that tops almost all lists, the Mississippi River. Hello and welcome to Time Bomb. In this episode, we're going to discover why we are still having so many issues with the Mississippi River. But before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel. I really appreciate your support. Originating from a tiny outlet stream at Lake Itasca, Minnesota, the Mississippi River begins its 2300 mile long journey through the United States, eventually draining into the Gulf of Mexico, just southeast of New Orleans. The Mississippi River is well known for its great length. The river splits the border between 10 U.S. states and is one of the longest rivers in North America, second only to the Missouri River, one of the Mississippi River's tributaries. But even more impressive is the Mississippi River's drainage basin. Officially titled as the Mississippi Atchafalaya River Basin, or MARB, the watershed covers over 1.2 million square miles and is the third largest in the world, following only the Amazon and Congo River basins. 31 states plus two Canadian provinces drain into the Mississippi River. The basin's land area covers 41% of the lower 48 and 15% of North America. The Mississippi River is a powerhouse of economic activity. Its waters support a giant commercial shipping industry, transporting goods valued over $400 billion every year. From the heartland's grain to the nation's coal, the river serves as a vital artery for America's trade. But there's more to the Mississippi River than commerce. It provides drinking water to over 18 million people. Its fertile basin provides arable land for agriculture, sustaining both local farms and the nation's food supply. Yet, as important as the Mississippi River is, it has been dealing with two reoccurring issues that it should have been corrected long ago persistent low water levels, and saltwater inundation. The ebb and flow of the Mississippi River's water is well documented. Records from as far back as 1954 show a few instances of the Mississippi River's low water levels. But the low water situation has become more frequent in recent years. In October of last year, the river's water levels dipped lower in some areas than at any other time since records began back in 1954. In fact, experts dubbed the year 2022 as very historic, as 8 out of 10 stream gauges in the Memphis district recorded new lows. And if 2022 wasn't bad enough, the 2023 dry season has turned out to be even worse. Water levels in the Mississippi River began to plummet in early September, well ahead of the October drop last year. On September 14, 2023, the gauge level in Memphis dropped to a new record low of negative 10.97 feet. A month later, the river finally reached its low point for the year when it hit negative 11.92 feet. Now, it's important to remember that we measure the depth of rivers using a gauge height. This is the water level measured against a reference point that is specific for each monitoring site. Most of the time, that reference point is placed well below the lowest anticipated depth of the river. So when we say the river is negative 10 feet, the actual water level is 10 feet below the reference point or gauge datum. And it's not just the Memphis area that is dealing with low water levels. New record lows have been recorded all along the Mississippi River and its major tributary, the Ohio River. Since early September, every water level gauge along a 400 mile stretch of the Mississippi from the Ohio River to Jackson, Mississippi has been at or below the low water threshold. The Mississippi River is a crucial waterway for the export of agricultural products, with about 60% of the country's grain exports being shipped down the river. And when you ship grain, speed is crucial. But these low water conditions could not have come at a worse time. Harvest season. 
The Mississippi's low water levels force shippers to cut back on the amount of cargo they load on each barge. Lighter barges are less likely to have trouble on their journey down a low river. Less freight on each barge means higher costs for the farmer, the shipper, and the consumer. For example, the cargo rate from St. Louis southward is now up 77% above the three-year average. Typically, barges are the most efficient way to transport large amounts of cargo. One barge carries the same amount as 35 train cars or 134 semi-trucks. But current weight restrictions, combined with increased traffic, make barges slower and more expensive. Low water levels do not only impact shipping on the Mississippi River. When the river's freshwater flow diminishes, it loses its ability to push back against the seawater from the Gulf of Mexico, leading to saltwater advancing upstream. During most months of a typical year, the Mississippi River's volume of water flow is enough to prevent saltwater from the Gulf of Mexico from intruding upstream into the Mississippi River. However, when the river's flow falls below a certain level, salt water begins to move upstream from the Gulf of Mexico, causing all kinds of problems. The impact of this saltwater intrusion is significant. First, drinking water of the communities located near the river delta in southern Louisiana may become contaminated with salt water. Agricultural land can also become fouled by salt water and any industry that uses fresh water for cooling will also face challenges due to the saltwater intrusion. And of course, we have the environmental impact of increased salinity in the Mississippi River. The United States Army Corps of Engineers has been involved in the management and development of the Mississippi River since the Rivers and Harbors Act of 1824. Although other entities, such as the United States Coast Guard and state and local governments, play a role in managing navigation on the river, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is responsible for navigable waters in the United States, including the Mississippi River. Over the years, the Corps has been responsible for constructing and maintaining locks and dams, dredging the river to ensure safe and reliable navigation, and managing flood control systems to protect surrounding communities and the river's navigability. When water levels in the river are low, several measures can be taken to maintain navigability. The first line of defense is a series of 29 locks and dams on the main course of the Mississippi River. All of these dams are located al along the upper Mississippi River, above St. Louis. The Corps adjusts operations at these facilities to maintain water levels and flow rates, helping to mitigate the impact of low water levels. Now, there are no locks and dams along the lower Mississippi. To maintain navigation along the lower half of the river, they rely on dredging. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is constantly conducting dredging operations to remove sediment and to deepen the river channel. This helps ensure that commercial vessels can navigate the river even when water levels are lower than normal. However, if the water levels fall too low, the only thing left to do is manage traffic on the river. This task is handled by the U.S. Coast Guard, but other authorities and local governments also play a role. Managing traffic in times of low water typically involves implementing draft restrictions or limiting the number and size of vessels that are allowed to travel along particularly difficult stretches of the river. And it's these draft restrictions that lead to increased shipping costs. With barges carrying less cargo, more trips are needed to transport the same amount of goods, leading to increased transportation costs. And of course, these costs are often passed on to consumers. As for saltwater intrusion, the Army Corps of Engineers has been extending an underwater levee in the river to slow the advancement of saltwater. You may hear this type of structure referred to as a saltwater sill or a saltwater barrier sill. Now, saltwater is denser and heavier than French freshwater, so it flows along the bottom of the river. The saltwater sill exploits this by creating a barrier that blocks the advancement of the saltwater. These underwater barriers are one of the most effective methods to prevent saltwater intrusion. 
The Corps also has the option of using controlled releases of water from reservoirs upstream to help flush out the salt water. However, this strategy is only effective if there's enough water in the upstream reservoirs. And in this case, there is not. Parish officials are also at work, extending pipelines further upstream to allow fresh water into their intakes. This will allow municipalities to provide fresh water from further upstream in the Mississippi River. Today, the Mississippi River is hovering just a few inches below the low water mark in Memphis. This is a notable improvement from the record lows a few weeks ago, but still historically low for this time of year. Well, that's it for this week's episode. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with another episode next week. In the meantime, please consider subscribing to the channel. I really value your support.